Hi there, folks. This is Luke Charles Kuhn at Kuhn Truck and RV, your Class B and B Plus RV specialists. My friends call me Luke and my sisters call me Charlie, but you can call me anytime at 419 899 2020. Myself or my brother Levi would be happy to help you. Please check out our website at truckandrv.com to view all of our inventory. There's a direct link to this particular RV in the video description below. If you follow that link, it will take you to our website where you can see the pricing and information on this unit. Once once this unit is sold, that link will be removed. We are a full service dealer offering warranty as well as financing packages. If you have any questions, please give me or my brother Levi a call at 419-899-2020. For sale today, we have a 2002 Road Trek 190 Versatile with 91,992 miles. Alrighty folks, here we are inside of this 2002 Road Trek 190 Versatile. As usual, we're gonna start in the front, work our way towards the rear. Gonna do my best to give you a good idea of the overall floor plan, as well as the overall condition of this unit. Here at Coon Truck and RV, we are a family owned and operated dealership since 1976, started by Levi and I's mom and dad. Today we specialize in hard to find small motor homes like this road trek. All these units go through the same inspection process before they hit the web. We'll go through a full demo with you at the time of sale. If you are not familiar with the differences between the Road Trek 190 Popular and Road Trek 190 Versatile, we do have a comparison video. We'll put a link to that on the screen as well as in the video description. There's lots of good examples of the beds made up, different measurements, and can help you decide whether you think the 190 Popular or Versatile will be right for you. So we do have in the versatile four captain's chairs up front. That's what makes it different from the popular. Also, the sleeping arrangement is slightly different in the back. But one of the advantages to the versatile is you do have these four captain's chairs with four belts up front. You have two belts in the back, so you have a total of six belts. You can make beds by swiveling the passenger and driver seats and connecting them with the uh, chairs behind. So there are drawers below that act as storage and also the supports to make up the beds if you'd like to make up these beds up front and these are going to be more geared towards kids or shorter adults people that are 6'3 like myself are probably not going to like to sleep there so much got a window that opens here we do have a privacy curtain that you can pull all the way around the front as well as to cover these windows here by the side entry a nice stash area got the levels test here that can test the propane, fresh, gray, black water, as well as your coach battery. We've got the water pump on off switch that will pump the water out of the onboard water tank. Your coach battery disconnect, porch light switch, got your generator start stop switch. That has 259 hours, fresh service, fresh oil change by our certified owner technicians. Here in the center of the coach, we have the basin that acts as the shower basin. The drain is located beneath this trench cover. So this will help prevent the water from getting ahead of the shower. But if it does, this is also a wet dry area. The way the shower works is it is inside of this closet area. You can pull the shower curtain around here to help contain the water. You also have the fantastic fan here that runs on the coach battery and acts like an attic fan at night and also your exhaust fan for the shower. We do have a privacy flip out here so you can flip this portion of the door out to provide privacy from the front of the coach, whether you're using the bathroom or potentially sleeping in the rear. A storage closet here got two table legs as well as the smaller table which you can put in the front or the rear if you'd like there's also a privacy flip out on that door got your propane furnace flip around to the driver's side of the coach check out the kitchen area a three-way Dometic fridge freezer. Oops, so this is a three-way, meaning it can run on AC, so your plug-in or your generator. DC, which would be your coach battery, or propane gas. Got a single basin stainless sink. Two burner propane cooktop. 
got a window that does not open. Got the water heater on off switch there. So the water heater lights itself. Got two 110 outlets. Small storage above the oven light and range fan. Oops, these are all kind of triggered to help keep them from flying open while you're driving. Got some storage here, as well as some TV connections and a 12 volt. This is where the DVD player would normally be, or the VHS back in the day. These are often relocated to the TV, so this has a built-in DVD player in the TV. Got a counter slide out to provide more space. Nice overhead storage. Got a cool cat AC and heat pump that's controlled via the thermostat on the wall. There's the thermostat for the cool cat AC and heat pump just right there on the wall. So the way this unit is designed to sleep in the versatile is to have one person sleeping crossways or two people this way. We'll go ahead and drop a picture and some measurements here so you can see what that looks like made up. The bed in the rear measures approximately 72 inches side to side or east west and 52 inches front to back or north south. There is an additional table beneath the cushion on the driver's side along with the boards that make up the full bed in the back. Down here below the couch in the rear. We have your 12 volt fuses and your 110 breakers. So those are labeled. This is a nice place where you can come to consult to see what would be running off of your coach battery and what would be running off of your shore power plug-in or your generator. So I like to separate these into house power because in my mind you have breakers in your house and these as car power because you have fuses in your car and these are running off of the coach battery. Got a door where you can access the storage which you can also access through the rear entry doors. Got a table mount, propane detector. Got a access for some of the water stuff there. This flooring has been replaced at some point in this RV's life. We did not replace this flooring. Not a perfect job. It's always difficult to trim around these things, especially if you don't take the seats out in the rear. As you can see, there's got some trim around the edges. Got the boards to make up the bed in the rear. So these boards will fit on these slats to make up the big bed. Got a window that opens on the driver's side with a screen on the lower, a 110 outlet. The rear windows open, but they do not have screens. This window opens, but it does not have a screen. We've also got speakers in the rear that are wired to the head unit. So whatever you're listening to up front will play through these speakers as well. Here we are sitting in the couch bed at the rear of the RV. We've got about 69 inches of headroom here at the step up and 72 inches of headroom in the main basin. I was wondering why music was coming from my printer. Apparently the paper was jamming. Got a microwave here. I don't know if I touched on that earlier. That runs off the generator or the shore power only. Got these signature road truck windows. Privacy curtain you can pull all the way around the front. So again, for the versatile model, the front chairs both swivel. They will connect with the bases here so the drawers will come out. These will come off and use those as the cushions to make up this. I do recommend checking out our Road Trek 190 Popular versus 190 Versatile video. Put that in the description as well as on the screen. I think it will help to show you guys some different variations of this, talk about some of the usage cases. So again, we got a real nice unit here. It does show some blemishes and some age. Nothing that affects the fun or usability of this RV. Because of the wood floor being replaced, and not exactly a perfect job, but not a bad job either. Uh, some of the blemishes on the outside, general cosmetic, things like that. I'm gonna call this one an eight out of 10. Could call it an eight and a half, just depends on how much you wanna ding it for those things. This is a, pr a pretty clean Southern unit. It's gone through our full inspection process. Check it out at truckandrv.com. Coon Truck and RV, the best little RV dealer around since 1976. Forgot to show this cabinet beneath the kitchen sink. 
So we've got a couple drawers that someone's added to help get in there, as well as access for the water heater bypass and the back of the water heater. Up here in the cabin area, we have power windows, power locks, power mirrors, tilt, cruise, CD player. Got a glove box there with the chassis manual. We do have some age on the seats. And on the driver's seat, these don't appear to be burn marks or smoking type damage, just more of age from sitting in them and this leather vinyl type material cracking. The two rear seats are in better shape, presumably from not having been sat in so much. We do have a window that opens with a screen here as well. These are cup holders. Here's the other seat cushion. And we've got the manuals in the back of the driver's seat there. Alrighty folks, we're gonna go around the outside of this 2002 Road Trek 190 Versatile. This RV measures 20 feet bumper to bumper with an 11 foot manual awning. The tires have 4920 date codes. This RV is built on a Chevy 3500 chassis, the 5.7 liter V8 engine with 91,992 miles. A nice looking exterior on this one. We do have some age on the stripes throughout. Ports light up there, that's your furnace exhaust. The storage compartment. The coach battery is located behind this flashing. Going around to the back of the unit, we've got a tow package. You can flop the spare tire down, possibly use this as a table or a grill stand, some people like to do that. We've got your propane tank behind this little plastic door. Has some storage you can access underneath the couch in the rear. You've got your fresh water fill right there. Got the stove exhaust, back of your water heater, the fill for the engine and the generator. Got your generator exhaust down there. Generator is located up where the spare tire normally would be. Got an outside shower, convenient to wash your shoes off at the beach, kids or pets. Back of your fridge. Got a storage bay down here that has your shore power cord and some other goodies. Got your sewer dump here. You see you got two handles. So you'll pull the black first and then the gray. The black's gonna release the sewage from the toilet. The gray will rinse that clean with the sink and shower water. Take a quick look at some of the stripes here. Still a lot of shine on this unit, ready to hit the road.